And this little Goliath F400 car tester Christoph Bauer definitely turns heads. It's the brainchild of a big name in German automotive history, Karl Borgwart. He designed a three-wheel minivan back in 1924. The Blitzkarren had its bed in front of the driver. Christoph says the Goliath F400, by contrast, had its bed behind the driver, following Borgwart's principle of load and back, power and back. The Goliath had rear-wheel drive. It was marketed as a quick delivery van, but the vehicle is anything but quick. It has an absolute maximum speed of 50 kilometers per hour, and it seems like it takes forever to reach that. In the 1920s, these cheap little three-wheelers neatly filled a niche in the market. It put Germany's small tradesmen on wheels. Imitators like Tempo, Rollfix, and Standard quickly followed with minivans of their own, but none could fix the concept's inherent weaknesses. Christoph explains that the three-wheeler's biggest problem is that it tends to tip over when taking a curve too fast. 30 kilometers per hour was enough to land it on its side. Heavy loads and back help somewhat. Also, with such a narrow front, the driver could easily misjudge the width of the rear and end up literally stuck in traffic. In spite of these minor flaws, the motorized tricycles are still a common sight in the narrow streets of Trentino in northern Italy. Here, the Piaggio Ape has carried on the three-wheeler tradition since 1947. It's hardly any wonder that the three-wheel minivan is so popular south of the Alps. They're ideal for navigating the narrow alleyways typical of Mediterranean old towns and orchards and vineyards. With just 12 horsepower, the Goliath manages the climb up to Pergine Castle. Christoph is impressed by the two-stroke engine strength. The two-cylinder 400 cc's deliver 12 horsepower, and its location under the seat nicely warms the occupants' behinds, and it lowers the center of gravity to minimize the danger of tipping. The competitors weren't always as clever. The Tempo Hanseat, for instance, had its engine right over the front wheel, which made for rather adventurous handling. The Goliath F400 weighs in at just 550 kilos. It's built with only the barest essentials, minimal design for maximum success. Over 18,000 F400s and F200s were registered in Germany between 1933 and 1937. The F200 was powered by a six-horsepower, single-cylinder, two-stroke engine. Both produced a sound as unforgettable as it was typical. Christoph says the little Goliath F400 could haul up to 750 kilograms. That's why coal merchants, bakers, tradesmen, farmers, and many others found it so practical. And several variations were available. The classic flatbed, as here, and the closed panel van that could serve as a mobile shop with pull-down shutters. Or as a livestock carrier, the Goliath swiftly established itself as the market leader in its class. But even with the sensational success of his three-wheeler, Karl Borgvard's story did not end well. Christoph says Borgvard should have heeded the old saying, cobbler, stick to your trade. The three-wheelers made up the lion's share of his success. But he wasn't satisfied to stick with the lowly delivery vans and tried to develop luxury sedans and even a helicopter but that cost money, and eventually he didn't have enough to keep up production of his best seller. 
when in 1961, the Brayman Senate refused to vouch for a loan he urgently needed, he filed for bankruptcy. That was the end of Borgvard and the Goliath. Around 20,000 Borgvard employees lost their jobs in one of the largest bankruptcies in German automotive history. What's left is Karl Borgvard's legacy in nearly every corner of the world. Christoph explains that even if three-wheel minivans like the Goliath have since vanished from Germany, they can still be found abroad. The thousands and thousands of tuk-tuks all across Asia, for example, or the Ape in Italy, still in production today. He says none of them would exist without the Goliath. It was the first truly reliable and low-priced vehicle for German tradesmen and, in a sense, the ancestor of the VW Golf. He has no doubt the Goliath F400 is a milestone in automotive history. One question remains. Why did Borgvard pick the name of an outsized biblical warrior for a minivan? Was it a marketing move or massive confidence or just wishful thinking?